on, on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just bam, bam, and then bam, chalk away. Just audience. press, just press, just press that that bar there. The word chalk hill. Yeah. Or press number one. It's number one. Yes. Yeah, just press one, number yeah. one. Okay. Yeah, but you have to stop the show first, right? Yeah, which is this one. Yeah. Then I'm gonna stop the show. Start that, yeah. and then press number one. Chalk away, and then the floor, the floor is yours, yeah? See, that's got 29, that's got 28. All right, well, should we go, should, we can go from that reading, then. Yeah. I've got, I got 28 as well. And Dean Patsy, if I'm talking too quickly, slow me down. You don't talk to you quickly, you're a professional. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's, that's the spirit need. That's yeah, it's 5.30. Oh, right, it's gone. So, so stop. Stop that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, press. Hello, good afternoon and welcome. Welcome to the Mathematics Show with me, Mr. Numbervator. It's Wednesday, it's 5.30, and you know what that means. It means that you're gonna be learning about maths, you're gonna be having lots of fun with maths, and the one thing that I want you to remember is that maths is for everyone, and everyone can do maths. So you are all welcome to the first show, and um, it's with Chalk Hill Community Radio Station and sponsored by Sovereign Comics. In the show today, there is so much happening that you are not going to want to switch off or go anywhere. But before we start, can I please make sure, can all of you please make sure you've got a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper. Why? Because you're going to need to write everything down that I'm going to be telling you about. You're going to be drawing shapes. You're going to be learning about maths. And the first topic of the show today is about fractions. And some of you who know me will know that fractions is my favorite topic. It's fun, it's easy. We're going to be looking at what fractions mean, what they look like, what you can do with them, fractions of whole amounts, fractions of time, and we're going to be asking some questions about fractions. I'm going to be helping you all to become the best mathematician possible. So the show, the mathematics show is for you. It's for you, your six pupils who are about to do their math sats in about three weeks time. So you'll be able to call in, send me a text message, send me a WhatsApp message, send me an email and ask me questions about what you're worried about. Are you worried about percentages? Are you worried about fractions? Are you worried about shape? It's for you, year six. It's about you, GCSE students. You're doing your GCSE very shortly. So maybe you want to ask me about trigonometry, Pythagoras. You might want to ask me about algebra or quadratic equations. The show is for you, teachers. If you've got a lesson tomorrow, or maybe you're being observed, and you want some help and support and direction with lesson plans, give me a call. ECTs, we used to call them newly qualified teachers, but they are called early careers teachers. Any of you who are out there who want some tips, give me a call, send me a message. If you're a maths lead and you want to raise the profile of maths in your school, give me a call. If you're a parent, and you want some help with how to support your child at home when it comes to working with maths, give me a call. If you're a head teacher, give me a call. So as you can see, this show is for you. But I wanna start the show by just talking a little bit about fractions and what fractions are and what fractions mean. Right, can everyone please make sure you've got a pencil and you've got a pen ready? On your piece of paper, can you write this fraction three quarters? So the number at the top is called the numerator, and you've got the division line in between, and the number or the digit at the bottom is called the denominator. But what do these two numbers mean? What do they mean to you? 
Let me explain. When we are looking at fractions and we're talking about fractions and we're thinking about fractions, let's start by looking at the denominator. And the denominator is the number at the bottom. The denominator is telling me how many equal pieces to divide up my whole amount into. So I've asked you to write down the fractions three quarters. If I look at my denominator, I can see a four. That means I'm going to divide my whole amount into four equal pieces. And the key word here is equal. Each piece must be equal. So imagine you've got a pizza. A pizza has been delivered and you open the box and it's been divided into four equal pieces. Each of those pieces is one quarter. It is one out of four pieces. The denominator is four. Now let's imagine that you take three of those four pieces to eat for yourself. That means you've taken three out of four pieces and that three is your numerator. So what have you done so far? You've been able to read what a fraction means. It's not that bad, is it? Okay, but the definition of a fraction is, it's a bit of a whole. It's a part of a whole. It's not a whole amount, it's a bit of a whole amount. And when we're talking about fractions in everyday language and talk, you might hear someone say, I need a fraction of your time. What does that mean? Does it mean that I need all of your time? Or does it mean that I need a bit of your time? Well, there you go. It means a bit of your time. So when we're talking about fractions, think about fractions as a part of the whole, not the whole amount. Let's get back to the programme. As I said earlier, today's pro programme is really exciting. We have got a very, very, very special guest who I'm going to be talking with and interviewing in about 15 minutes, so do not go anywhere. And this special guest, I'm gonna tell you what her name is, and she's got a title. And my very special guest on my very first show is Mrs. Marva Rollins, O-B-E. And yes, I did say O-B-E. And just in case you're not too sure what OBE stands for, it means Order of the British Empire. And it is an award that has been conferred. And the word conferred means it's been passed on to. It's been given by the Queen on deserving people, members of the public like you and I, who have made a great impact in their field of work. And in Mrs. Rollins's case, it is education. Not only was she a head teacher, but she now actually trains head teachers. We're going to be talking to her later on. We're going to be doing some more work on fractions. I've got some questions for us to solve. I know that we're going to have people calling in and people have already started to send me messages with questions about fractions. And then also towards the end of the show, I've got something really exciting to talk about. And I've called this segment Maths in the News. And just to give you a little tease about what I'm going to be talking about, there's a very famous artist. And this artist, his name is Mr. Jack Hines. He has got a special project that he is working on. I'm not going to tell you what it is now, but you need to listen in later on. But the great news that I'm going to share with you now is I've got Mr. Hines with me next week on the show. So you will be able to talk to him, ask him questions, and he'll be able to tell you about what his special project is. So it's Wednesday, it's 5.30 and it's the Mathematics Show with me, Mr. Number Vater, Chalk Hill Community Radio Station and we're being sponsored by Sovereign Comics and Sovereign Comics 
I'm actually working with and we're actually and we have produced some comics to help you learn about maths and fractions. So if you're a year six pupil, this show is for you. If you're a teacher, this show is for you. If you're a head teacher, this show is for you. If you're a newly qualified teacher, ECT, this show is for you. So why not give me a call? Why not give me a call? Right, let's start some teaching and some learning. I did ask you at the top of the show to have a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper ready. Can you all now draw me a rectangle? What is a rectangle? I can hear some people asking that to themselves. Let me explain very, very quickly and very, very briefly. A rectangle is also called a quadrilateral. And that means it's a four-sided shape. A quadrilateral is a four-sided shape. And you've got pairs of parallel lines. And as I'm sure you've all been taught at school, parallel lines never meet. So you've got two long lines and you've got two short sides. So maybe you're thinking, how big should the, um, should the, should the rectangle be? Well, think about a normal classroom ruler, and you all know how long that is, that's 30 centimetres. Draw your rectangle that is exactly half the size of a normal classroom ruler. So that means your rectangle is going to be roughly about 15 centimetres long, and you can make the width, how wide it is, about four centimetres. Okay, so you've got a rectangle, 15 centimetres long and four centimetres wide. We're going to be using that rectangle to help us with our learning later on in the show. It's really exciting to be with you all this afternoon and please remember that this show is going to be going live every Wednesday at 5.30 on Chalk Hill Community Radio Station and it's going to be really, really exciting. Now on the line, I believe I've got my first caller. So I'm going to introduce my first caller to you and uh, let's see what our first caller is going to be asking and talking to me about. Good afternoon, caller number one. Good afternoon, can you hear me? Good afternoon, can you please tell us what is your name and um, what's... Good afternoon, can... good afternoon, can you hear me? Yeah, good afternoon, is that Mr Gittins? Oh, okay, we'll try again, he's gonna ring in again. So a slight technical hitch there, but it's okay. Um, while we're waiting for him to call back, um, all of you, as I've said, you've uh, drawn your rectangle and later on we're going to be using the rectangle to help us with our learning. But let me just give you a quick question and see what you make of it. OK, so I've written a little question for all of you. Some of you are going to find it easy. Some of you might not find it easy, but I'm going to be showing you how to use that rectangle to answer the question and here is my worded question one third of a class of 30 pupils like swimming so how many of the class do not like swimming let me repeat the question one third of a class of 30 pupils like swimming how many of the class do not like swimming. Right, get your pencils ready. Remember that rectangular bar that I asked you to draw? Now the fraction is one third because that's the fraction that I mentioned in the question. So what do you need to do first of all? That's correct, do what I'm doing. You're looking at the denominator and you're going to divide the rectangle into three equal pieces. Why is it three? Because the denominator is three. And that is telling us how many equal pieces 
to divide the whole amount up into. Have you all done that? I'll give you about three or four seconds. So you're going to divide your rectangle into three equal pieces. Now, in each of those equal pieces, can you write the fraction one third? So you're going to have one third in one of those boxes, one third in the middle, and one third on the right. And one third plus one third plus one third equals one whole, which is the same as three thirds. Now, I said to you that one third of a class of 30 pupils, 30 is the whole amount. So that rectangular bar represents 30 pupils. Now, if you look at your drawing, you have got three equal pieces. How much is each of those three pieces worth? Well, because 30 is our total whole amount, I'm going to divide 30 by my denominator, which is 3. And I'm sure you've all got the same answer as me. 30 divided by 3 is 10. So where you have written one third in each of those three equally sized boxes, can you now write the number 10? So you're going to have one third and underneath it the number 10. You're going to have another third and underneath it another number 10. And in the third box, you're going to have a third and underneath you're going to have the number 10. And as you know, 10 plus 10 plus 10 equals 30. Let's go back to the question. I can almost hear most of you shouting out the answer. The question was, one third of a class of 30 pupils like swimming. So how many of the class do not like swimming? Well, let's read that rectangular bar and let's get the answer. We're looking at one third and one third of the class is equal to 10 pupils. So look at the other two thirds. Each one of those is worth 10. And 10 plus 10 is 20. So one third of a class of 30 pupils, that must mean 10 pupils, like swimming. And the rest of them do not like swimming. So that means 20 pupils do not like swimming. And what does 10 plus 20 equal? You've got it. The answer is 30. 10 plus 20 equals 30. So what have you done there? You have been able to read that bit of rectangular bar, and we call it bar modelling. You all know what I'm talking about, whether you're a young person, whether you're a parent or a teacher, we're looking at bar modelling. And we're using bar modelling to help us with our learning. Now, I've got a caller on the line. I've got a caller on the line. Uh, good afternoon, caller. Can you hear me? Good afternoon, caller number one. Can you hear me? Good afternoon, caller number one. Can you hear me? Caller number one. Can you hear me? Good afternoon. Hello, caller number one. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Hello, can you speak into the, can you speak? Can I hear you? Okay, I can't hear you. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to unplug this. Going to unplug this. Right, good afternoon, Cora. Can you hear me? Yeah. Good afternoon. Can you please tell us what is your name and why are you calling? Good afternoon. Oh, hello. My name's Indra Thorpe. Yep. I'm calling because you, um, you um, teach my daughter, Adelina Thorpe. Oh, um, wow. Okay. To hear more about your show. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And um, can you please tell me, how is your daughter getting on with her maths? Um, she's doing really well, um, actually. Um, um, since you've um, started teaching her, she's, her maths her grades have actually increased. Um, and she's doing a lot better. She's becoming more confident. Um, and that's the main thing. She's um, you know, doing a lot better. 
And as her mum and as her parent, um, there was one word that you just mentioned, and that was the word confident. Can you, um, for the benefit of my listeners, can you explain to us how can you tell that she is and has become more confident? Yeah, well, well, it's her attitude towards her maths. Right. Um, like before, she would... Um, um, she would procrastinate a lot anyway, you know, um, and um, what I found is that now if we give her mass problems now, she'll have a more positive attitude right. to take action, right. um, to actually start the mass problems, like before, she would be like, oh, that looks too difficult, uh, you know, and she would not even um, think about attempting it, it would take a lot of effort from my part to try to get her to even attempt doing some of the questions. Wow, but, that's um, fantastic. What I found is that you've given her that extra support and that's you know she's her confidence has risen due to your support you know it's made a great impact on her learning um in her maths a lot and mum uh, and mum can, can i just ask you how does that make you feel as her mother oh very proud oh makes that's good very proud but it also um, it, it makes me feel really um, I'm, i feel really happy to be honest with you because you know before i was very worried right as a parent, you know, you if you just have, you know, you have the teachers at school, they're teaching them in the class, and you know, and um, and if they're not doing as well as you hope them to do, you yeah. know, hope for them to do, they, you, you know, you, you need the extra support, you know, and, and I've come across you, um, and it's just given me, you know, it really has alleviated a lot of my worries. Fantastic. Um, oh, that's really good so to hear. From that point, um, I'm not as worried as I was before, so it actually does help my being. As well. <laughs> Fantastic. And can I just ask, what year group is your daughter in, please? Um, year four. Year four. And, and, and I'm sure you know that the year fours uh, are going to be doing their multiplication uh, skills check later on this year, aren't they? Yes, yes. And she's been doing really well. Fantastic. Um, 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 as, as, you know, as I said, you know, she's, she's really has uh, improved a lot. She's improved a lot. Right. Um, and her multiplication, um, yes, I'm, I think she'll do very well with that as well. Yeah, because she's, you know, she's much more faster than she was before in her thinking. Fantastic. Yeah. Mum, can I just say, uh, you, you, you are and you have been my first ever caller. Can I just say thank you very much for what you've, you've mentioned and said to all of, um, all of my listeners, because if this is about you as a parent and we're sharing good practice. You've mentioned so many things already about what you're looking out for and what you've noticed and how much your daughter has made progress. And as a year four pupil, I know that she has worked really, really hard. And that is down to you with all of your support and all of your encouragement. So can I just say thank you for what you are doing. And I really look forward to working with your daughter again. And will you please call back again another time? Oh, yes, yes, definitely. We'll call back again. That's yes, fantastic. Thank you, thank you for your support. No, thank you very thank much you. indeed. Thank you very much thank indeed. Have a good you evening. Very much. Thank, thank you. Have thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Wow. So, listeners, isn't that exciting? That was my first caller. And um, you all heard her. And she was just talking about her daughter who. I happen to teach. Um, I wasn't too sure who it was at first, but you heard her say that I have been working with her daughter and, um, and, and you've mentioned the fact that, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing. Now, I've got another caller on the line. Now, I don't know who it is, but I'm going to, um, I'm going to take the call and let's see who it is. Good afternoon, caller number two. Can you tell us what your name is, what school you are with and the reason why you're calling? Good afternoon. Hello? Hello? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What is your name? Narayani. Narayani. And Narayani, how old are you? I'm 11 years old. Wow. So you're in year six and you're going to be doing your SATs very shortly, aren't you? Yeah. How do you feel about that? Quite nervous. Right. Okay. Narayani, can I just say something? I can just tell by your voice that there's no need for you to feel nervous. I can tell by your voice, Narayani. What school do you go to? Primary School in Muswell Hill. 
Ah, that's in the borough of Haringey. Well, I'm going to do a big shout out to all the teachers, all the staff and all the children at St. James's Primary School. We've got Narayani, who's in year six. And Narayani, what is your question that you would like to ask me this afternoon? How do you how do you convert fractions into decimals? Okay, Narayani, let me start off by asking you to do something for me. Can you write this fraction down? And that goes for all of you who are listening. Can you all write this fraction two fifths? So two is the numerator and five is the denominator. So you've got the two at the top and you've got the five underneath the line. Now, Narayani, I think you know more than you realise. Narayani, can you tell me what is one fifth as a decimal? It's, um, it's, 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 it's You're very close. Do you want to try again? One fifth as a decimal. Try again, because 0.5 is the same as a half. Do you want to have another go? And then if not, I will, I'm here to help you. Do you want to have another go? Point, zero point. Zero the answer is, the answer is, well listen, the fact that you give me two answers is brilliant. But the answer is zero point two. So one fifth as a fraction is equivalent to zero point two. So Narayani, if you now know that one fifth is equivalent to 0 0.2 as a decimal, can I ask you what would two fifths be equal to as a decimal? 0 0.3. Try again. So you've got 0 0.2 and then you're going to add another 0 0.2. Oh, 0 0.4. There you go. So two fifths is equivalent to 0 0.4 as a decimal. So Narayani, what would three fifths be equal to? 0 0.6. And four fifths? 0 0.8. You've, you're, you've just converted fractions into decimals. And Narayani, if you were asking me at the beginning of your question, how do you do it mechanically? How would you do it on paper? You would simply do two divided by five and that would give you your answer so you do two divided by five and then you'll get your answer of as you've just told us 0 0.4 has that helped you yeah do you feel a bit better with uh, with converting fractions to decimals yeah um when you were in school today what lesson what, what topic were you doing in maths in school today Ah, oh, and how do you define line graphs? Quite easy. So now, Rayanne, just for the benefit of the listeners and children in year six, what are line graphs? They show you, um, for example, if you had a chart. Yep. Time and uh, weather. Yep. What it is, it is a pattern line for the x axis. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. On the chart, yep. Um, time. Yep. Uh, the weather was at what time? Right. Right. Now, Rayani, can I just say, even as you are talking, and when you mentioned the x-axis, and you mentioned the y-axis, and you mentioned about reading the information, that is what line graphs do. They give us information, and we are able to read the information, and we are able to interpret the information. Has that been helpful this afternoon, Narayani? Yes, it has. Will you call back again another time? And do, you feel, and do you feel more confident when it comes to maths? Yeah. 
So can I just say one thing to you now, Rayani? I know that you're going to do amazingly well in your sats. There's nothing to worry about. Just carry on working. I can tell that your schools are really, really working hard with you. You've got some key understanding and you're going to be really successful. But can I just say a really, really big thank you for calling in and for being my first young person on the show. And I must just say you just spoke so clearly and I could hear the confidence as our conversation went on. So thank you, Narayani, and have a really, really good evening. And a big thank you to your parents who obviously are working there with you because that's what's making you so good. Goodbye. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Bye. Bye. We're going to go into a very, very short ad, ad break. I've got another call on my line. Um, I'm going to take this call very quickly, and then we're going to go into an ad break. So bear with me. Good afternoon, caller. Can you please tell me your name and why you are calling? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, caller. Good afternoon, Akari. Good afternoon, Akari. Can you please tell me uh, what year group are you in at school? I'm in year six. And what school do you go to? Uh, Akari, what primary school do you go to? I am. Um, I go to St James. Another pupil from St James. Akari, can you tell me? Do you enjoy learning mathematics at school? Yes. You do. What is your favourite topic in maths? Pardon? What is your favourite topic in maths? My favourite topic would probably be fractions. Wow. And what is it you like about fractions? Um, I like how you can have a fraction and you can turn it into a different fraction. What do you mean by that? Do you mean if you've got a mixed number... And then you yeah. can turn it in. So if you've got a mixed number, what can you turn it into? Uh, a fraction. Ah, right. So, Akari, can you just tell me, what does a mixed number look like? So, a mixed number... Yep. I think a mixed number is, for instance, one whole and two-fifths. Oh, that is brilliant. I've just written that down. So you've got one whole, so you've got a big number one and then you've got two-fifths as a fraction. Is that correct? Yeah. Brilliant. So, Akari, can you tell us, how would you then convert, change that into an improper fraction? So, improper, how you would change that into an improper fraction is you would take the whole... Yep. And then you um, divide it into five. Do, when you say divide, did you mean to say multiply it by something? Five. Okay, okay, right, carry on, yep. And then you would have, so five fifths is a whole. Oh. So you have, so you have, you would have six fifths. Y yes. So you have the five that equals one whole. Yes. And then you would have the one fifth from the mixed fraction. Mixed number, mixed, yep, yep. Yep. Yeah. Do you know what, Akari, the way you just explained that was just amazingly just so clear. And I know I jumped in, I should have given you more time, but that was brilliant. So that one whole, you've just told the listeners, is the same as five fifths. And because you've got the extra fifth, five plus one equals six. So what type of fraction have you now made? Fraction. And why is it an improper fraction? Because it's, it's not got holes. And also the numerator is? Smaller than the um, denominator. Th think about it's it. Bigger yeah. than the denominator. Well done. Well done. Akari, can I just say the way that you have spoken this afternoon has been absolutely outstanding because you've proved to all the listeners that you understand about what a fraction is, what a mixed number is and how to change the mixed number 
into an improper fraction. And can I just ask you, would you know how to change the improper fraction back into the mixed number? Yes, so you would basically, so if you've got five fifths, yep. so you would split the improper fraction up. Yep. So you would take the five fifths yep. and then turn it back into a whole. Oh, yes, yes. And then you would add the one fifth yes. onto that, which makes one and five, one fifth. Oh, Akari. I wish I was your teacher. I wish I wish you were in my class because the way you've just explained that, you've proved to me how how confident and how solid your understanding of fractions and maths in. Can I just ask, will you call in again another time? Yes, I you, will. That is amazing. Akari, can you say a big thank you to your mum and your dad? Because they are the ones who are obviously supporting you and helping you and making you who you are. So, Akari, thank you very, very much indeed. Have a really good evening, and I look forward to speaking to you another time, okay? You too. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye. That was Akari from St. James Primary School. You heard the way he spoke so eloquently, which means so clearly and so perfectly. I've got Marva Rollins on the line coming soon. I'm going to be talking to Marva Rollins after the break. I'm going to go to a quick ad break and I'll be with you and I'll be with you very shortly. So stay tuned. So stay tuned and we're going to come back after the ad break. Thank you. Phew. How long is that? Is it good? Amazing. Good. Amazing. The phone's popping off, bro. I can't, you know what I'm talking about? I haven't seen a show with so much cause, it's amazing. We need to go to the papers with this, no joke. We need to go do the, the, the press release. Yeah. Because this is absolutely, absolutely amazing, seriously. So this is a little break for oh, you as well. Huh? Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. Dean, Dean, let me give you some more paper, right? Hold on, sorry. Dean, let me give you some paper so we can just give, um, just write those messages big and hold them up for him. Isaac, always remember to get your break in so you can have a breather. Yes, yeah? yes. You know what I mean? But I know, but I know it's going like, you could have gone for the whole hour, really, without a break, innit? Yeah. But I think it's always good to just... What you can or cannot wear. Are you experiencing physical violence? Do they stop you from seeing or contacting your family or friends? If you or someone you know, let me put a jingle in there so that um, you won't have to. You may so be experiencing I'm domestic abuse or at risk of some of the forms of harmful practice. You are not alone. The Phoenix PNX Project is here to help, providing a free, sensitive, and confidential service to address and end harmful practices and violence. Right, so, 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 so you've got two minutes and Caribbean women and girls of all ages nine. experiencing domestic. Or sexual abuse, yeah, okay, sexual okay. exploitation, dating abuse, honor based abuse, faith based abuse, and female genital oh, so I've got two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah, two minutes, yeah. Support but yeah, I, like, I can see your passion about it. I think it's amazing, man. No wonder my daughter's like so excited and said, Oh my gosh, daddy, I need to speak to Isaac. 586 or visit clientsresettlement.com. So you can talk to her soon you come back in. Okay. Putting a stop to domestic abuse. Does your partner shout, mock, or threaten you? Do they monitor your phone calls, tell you where you can or cannot go, what you can or cannot go? Hello, Marva. Yeah, hello, Marva. Um, I'm going to bring you in in about a couple of minutes. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm, I've mentioned about Marva Rollins OBE. So the question that I wanted to ask you is: um, as a head teacher and a teacher of head teachers, what was your vision for maths in your school? Yeah. And then, and then I might ask you to explain what what OBE means and what it, and what it, what it represents. And then, and then, will you go into the, the math side of it? Okay. 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 So, so will you stay on the line then? Yeah. Oh, thank you, Marva. Thank you very much. I'm just going to get ready for the end of the um, the ad break. Chris will cook it a Caribbean experience you'll never forget. He's warm, courteous, and provides a service at high standards. Chris will cook it Caribbean catering provides for weddings, Christmas, funerals, head nights, and stag dues. We also do school parties. We provide a whole romantic meal for two with a restaurant feeling in your own home. 
West Flex. What do you mean? Chris will cook it a Caribbean experience you'll never forget. He's warm, courteous, and provides a service at high standards. Chris will cook it. Caribbean catering provides for weddings, Christmas, funerals, hen nights, and stag dinners. We also do small parties. Sorry, sorry, we provide all right, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's gone round. Has it gone round again? Oh, 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 you know, we, we put on random rather than normal. Right, that's a good time. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Good afternoon. Uh, this is the Mathematics Show with me, Mr. Number Veta. It's Wednesday, and each Wednesday going forwards at 5.30, we're going to be learning about maths, enjoying maths, and making maths come alive. I've got something really, really special to talk about now. I've got someone really, really special on the line waiting to, to talk and to share what she's got to say um, about maths and being a head teacher and a teacher of head teachers. As I mentioned to you, um, my special guest is Mrs. Marva Rollins, OBE. Good afternoon, Marva. Good afternoon, Oprah. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, Marva, that's fantastic. Marva, you're, you're more than welcome. You are, you're always welcome. Marva, can you tell um, the listeners, and as you know, we've got a lot of young children on the line, what does it mean by OBE? Okay, um, it's, not, it's actually an order, it was an award from the Queen, but it's someone that you know had to uh, recommend you, and it takes about 18 months to go through the process, is what I found out, because I didn't know the process. And it's Order of the British Timper, but I call it Order of Black Excellence. That's what I refer to it as. Brilliant. To make it real for us as black people. Fantastic. Oh, Marva, as I mentioned earlier to the listeners, um, you were a head teacher, and now I understand that you are teaching head teachers. Um, Marva, when you were a head teacher, um, what was your vision for maths in your school, and what is your vision for maths nationally today? Well, as you know, I sat because you spent many years working alongside me in my school, and I brought you in at a critical time because when I took over my school, in 2000, that's my second headship. I've been a head for nearly 20, I was a head for nearly 25 years. Um, that's a long the, time. Over the school, the, the math was in the 20, um, at year six, 20, only about 27% of children were getting the expected level. And you can imagine how crushing that was. Yeah. Um, because it is, the school was in one of the poorest areas in the country and they're the very children that need the best mathematicians, the best teachers overall. So what maths means for me is that it's a way into understanding lots of other things. I learned maths at school and I was good at maths, but I didn't really understand the why we did things in a particular way. We didn't understand why we were doing it and what it meant in real life. I understand, right. So as a teacher and as a teacher, I mean, let me break it down. The schools I've worked in, as you know, I mean, because we worked with me for many years, as I said, a lot of the children came to the school not yet speaking English. So for me, English clearly wasn't a universal language because they had a lot to learn from not speaking to speaking as fluently as possible. But to me, maths was a universal language. And to me, you do not need to be able to speak English to be able to do maths well. Right. So I used maths as a way to identify and help children to see that they were good at something while they learned something oh. else. And that something else was the language of English. Amazing. The language of maths is universal. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, so that is where I stood. And when. Um, so, and I, I love maths, even though know, one of my sons is a maths teacher, and I like to think he got that from me. <laughs> I'm sure he did, I'm what sure I, he did, Mrs. Rollins. What I, what I 
what you know we call during that crucial point we we got into the 70s percent like after a number of years but we were stuck there weren't we yes so yes that is what you bring to math you brought an excitement you brought an energy you brought a practical approach where you could break it down and you help the teachers to teach the children and for the listeners i would say one of your major strengths is not only teaching children but teaching teachers how to teach children and teaching teachers to have a love of math. Oh. Well, of children. You know, we took the most reluctant children. No yep. girls don't like maths and all that stuff. Well, if you support girls really love maths and, and they excel as well as boys at maths, but all children excel. And yep. for the listeners, I will tell you that in one particular year, with Isaac's help, we got 99%. I don't know, and, and at the end of his stage two, I don't know if you remember that year. I do. <laughs> it was hard work. Consistently <laughs> over your time with us, we were in the 90%. And that was really about the art of teaching teachers how to teach and keep children engaged, as well as teaching children to love and understand. It's the understanding, isn't it? Yes, well, yes. Something, you don't get it, but yep. because you don't understand it, yep. once you let them understand it, they will fly. And I think we, if you support maths flow at Raymond. Uh, Mrs. Rollins, Martha, can I just say um, I've, I've I've enjoyed working with you, and I still do enjoy uh, working at um, at the at the same school. Um, they the children and the families and the parents, as you know, are amazing. But can I just say a really, really big thank you for uh, for, for taking your, the time out to come and explain to everyone what you do and what you what you what your experience has been. Um, of working in the primary school and can I ask you the same question will you come back again another time and s maybe spend a bit longer speaking with the children and myself please oh of course anytime anytime Isaac you've made a difference to thousands of children and, and it's not in the time of knowing you so anytime anything that helps I, I will come back thank you very very much indeed and I'm sure there might be some children who um, who still know you at the moment so Mrs Rollins can I just say thank you very very much have a lovely evening and I look forward to speaking to you again very very soon okay, thank you and all the best with the program, yeah? thank you very much indeed thank you thank you bye bye uh, that was a lovely interview with Mrs Rollins um, a bit, I was taken aback a little bit, but you know that's what live radio is all about. Can I just do a couple of big shout outs, okay? My first shout out has to go, my first shout out has to go to um, the pupils in year five and six at Rainham Primary School. Good afternoon pupils, it's the pupils and all of the teaching staff and the head teacher and everyone there. Good afternoon because it's a lovely school and I really do enjoy my time there. Um, I'm doing a big shout out to the year six pupils at St James's Primary School in, in Haringey. Keep on learning and working hard with your maths. And, um, and children, if you want to nominate uh, one of your favourite teachers for me to give a shout out to, drop me an email and then we can do that on a weekly, weekly basis. So shout out to all of you because it's absolutely amazing. I've got another caller who's waiting. So let's see. Oh, the caller's gone. OK, I'm going to try and get the caller back shortly. Um, can I just say um, one of the segments in my show is going to be it's going to be about maths in the news and I'm going to be talking to you very shortly about someone really really special but I'm back with my uh, next caller good afternoon caller good afternoon caller can you tell me what your name is and um, why you are ringing your name is sorry your name is Kylan, good afternoon, Kylan. How are you? Good. Kylan, there's one thing that I I was told, I was told by my producer something about you, and uh, he said to me that you are very, very, very good with your times tables. Is that correct? Mm, yeah. Can I give you a couple of questions? Okay. Yeah, and can I just say, Kylan? 
It doesn't matter whatever answer you give. I'm looking at your confidence, okay? Kylan, what is nine times eight? Um, uh, 64. No, it's uh, 70 times 8. Try once more. You're very close. Nine times eight. Seventy. Um, Seventy-six. No, seventy-four. Two less. Uh, seventy-two. Correct. And what's six times four, Kylan? Twenty-four. And what's three times eight? Um, uh, yep. And what's two times twelve? And what's half of 48? 24. Isn't it interesting how you're the same answer, you kept giving me the same answer each time. And Kylan, that was really, really good. Kylan, tell me about fractions. Do you enjoy learning about fractions? Sometimes. Yeah, and in fractions, is there one particular area of fractions that you're not too sure about? Some addition, like questions. Right, okay. Now, Kylan, you know sometimes when we teach you, we can add fractions with the same denominator. Do you understand that? Yeah. Can I just give you a quick question? What would two-fifths plus one-fifth equal? Three-fifths. There you go. What does three-quarters plus one-quarter equal? There you go. Kylan, you're saying to me about fractions, you're not too sure, but I think you're being absolutely amazing at the moment. Kylan, can you tell me, what do you understand by a mixed number? Um, that's like, uh, it's like a fraction with a whole, yep. and you have like the remainder of the fraction. Can, can, brilliant. Can you give me an example of a mixed number? Brilliant. Can you give me an example of an improper fraction? Um, 25 fifths. Wow. Kylan, that's amazing. Kylan, can I put you on the spot, okay? And just, just breathe and do your best. Can you tell me, if I gave you the fraction 5 sixths, so 5 would be your numerator and 6 would be your denominator, can you tell us, is the fraction 5 sixths, is it closer to one whole, or is it further away from one whole? Closer to one whole. How do you know it's closer to one whole? Because uh, the numerator is one less than the denominator. Oh, Kylan, what kind of answer is that? That is absolutely amazing. So if I gave you the fraction 1 sixth, is that fraction more closer to one whole or further away? Further away. How do you know it's further away? Because one six from the Kylan, can I just say something, yeah? I'm really pleased that you called in and what I've heard throughout the conversation that I've had with you is your confidence has grown the way that you are mentally recalling information and answers and numbers has been absolutely outstanding. Can I ask you the same question? Will you call back again another time? Yes, definitely, 100%. Uh, and you've used the word percentage, okay, which is interesting. Can I just say, Kylan, can you just say a big, big thank you to your family, your parents, uh, because it's obviously down to them that you are just so amazing. Have a great evening. Thank you very, very much for calling in, Kylan. And I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Is that okay? Yeah. Thank you, Kylan. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Wow, wasn't that interesting? I mean, I do not know who's going to call me, but it just seems that all of these young people are, are ringing in because they feel confident when it comes to maths. Um, I know that I've got someone special um, who's going to be coming on very shortly. Um, just giving them a little call. Hello, are you there, next caller? Good evening, my next caller, are you there? No, okay, no problem. I'm sure they're going to ring back shortly. Now, at the top of the show, I mentioned that in, as part of the programme each week, I'm going to be talking about maths in the news. 
What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is that I'm going to be finding out by reading and by talking to people about topical bits of information that you, as young people, will find interesting. And the one that I've chosen this week is this one. There's a famous artist and his name is Mr. Jack Hines. And he has said, he has said that he plans to draw 2,000, he plans to draw nearly every big, major, important building in London in his lifetime. Now, I can't get my head around this, but what he is saying, what he is saying is that he plans to draw as many buildings, famous buildings, popular buildings in London in his lifetime. And he's given himself a target of 2,000 buildings, 2,000 drawings. Now, I don't know if he's going to actually make that aim. I've got no idea. But there is something that I am going to tell you. I've got him with me next week, Wednesday at 5.30. So if you want to find out more about what he is doing and what his project is about, don't forget to log in, tune in for next week because he's going to be telling you exactly what he's all about. But I'm going to give you a quick question. I'm going to give you a quick question that you can be working on throughout the week. Can you name 10 famous London buildings that he, Mr. Hines, could draw? Can you name, can you name 10 famous buildings? For example, Buckingham Palace. That is a famous building. The Houses of Parliament. That is a famous building. The Science Museum. That is a famous building. So, get writing. I've got another caller on the line. Good evening, caller. Can you tell us who you are and the reason why you're calling? Good evening. Hello. Yes, good evening. Your name is? Timmy. Timmy, right, Timmy. And where are you calling from, please? Um, your house, man. You're <laughs> Okay. All right, Timmy, um, can you tell everyone who you are? And so everyone knows who you are. So who are you, Timmy? Okay, and Timmy, what would you like to say to all the young people and children on um, on the show this evening, please? All right, so um, honestly, I'm very proud of you. Even me, even school a long time ago, I'm in college now. Even listening along, listening along to the radio makes me, you know, remember everything. But if you have any problems um, in learning, my dad can really help you get to where you need to be, make you confident, help you pass all your exams. So yeah. Timmy, can I just say you brought tears to my eyes, and I'm not embarrassed to say that, okay? Um, I, 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 obviously, I'm really proud to have you as my son, but yeah, um, well done for what you've just said. And um, Timmy, will you call in again another time? Yes, I, I will. I have one quick question. Yes, what is it? So, uh, what are your tips to becoming a successful teacher? What a fantastic question. Right, a successful good teacher is someone who is confident, someone who is prepared to take challenges and to take risks, someone who does not have to be, does not have to know everything about maths. I do not know everything about maths, but a good successful teacher is someone who is able to uh, present, to engage, to demonstrate and to make maths come alive. That's a really, really nice question. Have I answered your question, Timmy? Definitely, definitely. So there you guys have it. Any little kids out there that want to become a teacher, follow those steps and you can definitely become great like my dad as well. Do you know what, Timmy? Thank you very, very much for calling in. And I look forward to speaking to you again very, very shortly on the Mathematics Show. So have a really good evening and thank you very much for calling in. All right, see you later. Dad. Thank you, bye. Um, uh, I must just say, I, I know how this program is going to be going, by the way. Um, I, I did not know all of these people were going to call in. I did know about Mrs. Rollins, obviously. But the other parents and children, 
I had no idea. And the good thing about this show is that not only are we going to have uh, children in the primary school, we're going to have children and young people in the secondary school. And I've had a message that's been sent to me by someone who is in year 11, and they have been asking me about the right angle to triangle and uh, trigonometry and Pythagoras. And all I'm going to say to, um, to, to, the, to the young person who's in year 11 is uh, please call in next week. So we, we, the program goes live at 5.30. Please call in next week and I will, I will be able to explain to you and you'll be able to understand and to make sense of what uh, Pythagoras is all about and the right angled triangle. Listeners, unfortunately, we've come to the end of the show. Can I just say it's been absolutely amazing listening to you, working with you, talking with you and sharing ideas with you. And I really cannot wait until next week. The topic, um, the math topic for next week is going to be about multiplying and dividing by 10 a hundred and a thousand and so on. Before I go, I must just do a big shout out to, uh, we've got listeners in Zambia. We have got listeners in Zambia. We've got listeners in Ghana. We've got listeners in America. And this is amazing. This is really, really amazing. So can I just say a big thank you to everyone for this afternoon. Thank you to all the parents, all the mums and dads, and everyone who's been supportive of the first show. And uh, drop me an email, uh, leave your comments, leave your questions, and I look forward to working with you again next, fr next Wednesday, 5.30, on The Mathematics Show with me, Mr. Number Vata, have a really, really good evening. Thank you and see you all again soon. Bye-bye. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Massive, massive, massive. Massive, massive round of applause, Isaac. Massive. I haven't, I haven't seen that like that. It's crazy. You, you have to extend your show, you know. Because, were you happy with it, Flex? 100%. Uh, have you got a USB? Not with me. Oh. That was amazing. Hello, Timmy. Hello.